I don't really watch Trash Tuesday. Um, the most I watched it was when they started exposing Brendan and shit. That was a pretty funny period. But I did appreciate their presence. I thought it was quite nice to have a pod like that within the LA podcast scene, scene or whatever um, with three women involved in stand-up in, their, in various guises. I know Kalala isn't a stand-up, but she's kind of in that world. Um, it was quite nice to have that as a pod. It mixed things up a little bit, and I'm sure the fans loved it. But it seems like over time, there's been definitely some issues with the free host. But I feel like, again, I could be a miss here. But I feel like ever since they exposed Brendan, the show has never really been the same. And let me tell you why I think that. I remember when I was doing a few streams ago, maybe we we're talking about that girl who said that she was the girl at the Super Bowl thing. Do you remember? The Super, Bowl, the, the Super Bowl thing where Brendan handed the girl a note. We were kind of analyzing that video and figuring out if that young girl was actually the girl in the video. And I remember I said something along the lines of like, I think as great as it was Annie Liederman, Kalila, and to some extent Esther being brave to kind of out some of the fucking bullshit dudes in the scene and kind of called out some of their fucking awful behavior. I think I said at the time, it felt like to me, like they committed the worst sin. And it felt very obvious to me at the time that a lot of the comedians in the com in that community didn't really rally around them, even though Brendan at the time wasn't the most well-liked person either. I think there's like an unspoken rule or an unwritten rule within stand-up where you pretend to not see the things that you see. Or if you do see them, you don't comment on them in public. So if you go to a comedy club and you see someone doing something that they're not meant to be doing, um, you don't say anything about it. You kind of keep hush. I think there's this culture that the comedy club is like their sanctuary. It's like their quote unquote safe space where they can say and do what the fuck they want. So even though what happened to allegedly Annie didn't happen in a comedy club per se, happened on a comedy club premises, the fact that she was said that on pub in a public platform i feel like a lot of people in the community didn't really like that and it didn't really sit right with them and i feel like ever since then they've been kind of ostracized especially annie i think so because she was always a bit a bit of a tomboy anyway she kind of gave me vibes of a girl that would be very comfortable around men so most likely the boys felt a little bit betrayed that she would say that and probably changed the way they acted around her because they didn't want her to go in the pod and maybe expose them in the future so i feel like the pod was doomed ever since then which is really a shame if you think about it it's a real crying shame that these women have suffered like this um even though they were just sharing their experience with brendan or somebody that could have been brendan um and it shouldn't have gone that far but i think unfortunately that comedy scene is kind of toxic and um those guys clearly didn't feel that it was Annie's place to say what she said on the pod, even though it was her experience. And obviously ever since then, the pod hasn't been the same. So anyway, Annie announced on her podcast that she's leaving. It's a really long clip. It's like half an hour. We're going to go through it as much as we can. And she's talking about why she left. And we're going to try and pick apart what she's saying here. But there's also a bit here that kind of didn't sit right with me. The boyfriend or the fiance. He seems like a fucking loser. So please watch this video and figure out if you get the same vibes from that i got about the boyfriend or the fiance sorry he seems like a real fucking loser and it makes sense though because i remember brendan saying that he bumped into annie Liederman at Skankfest, and um he, the guy was like being his friend like being all friendly and happy and i was like i remember the time on the stream i was like why the fuck was that guy licking up to brendan if brendan allegedly did what he did to like I'd want to fucking fight Brendan. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't fucking touch me. Don't talk to me. Even if it happened before I was around. Like, even if that boyfriend wasn't in the picture when um, Brendan offered her a drug walk, I wouldn't be trying to be his friend. But when you see him and you see the way he talks, it makes a lot of sense why he was sucking up to Brendan. He's a f he comes across like a bit of a dork. So let's watch the video and see what you think. See if you agree with what I'm saying. There have been some rumors out there that I've been getting some DMs about oh, and some messages about and um it will be addressed fully on the next episode of trash tuesday next tuesday but um i am currently a medium of the one podcast and it is 
called Annie Wood and welcome to it. And I think that I'm very happy you're here. If you are watching this episode and you are a Woody and a Shoody and a Coody, I'm very happy that you've been here while we've been trying to figure out the show and evolving and changing things. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been a little burnt out on the show and not really able to give it my all because I just have been spread quite thin. And I'm very excited to be able to focus more on the things that I'm doing, stand up especially, because I don't know if you guys know this story, but uh, when I started stand up comedy in 2009, January 28th, 2009, um, it was my last day drinking. I was in New York. I moved back from, I moved from Santa Fe, New Mexico to New York to do stand up, which um, was just a big dream of mine. I was drinking heavily in Santa Fe. I was crashing. I was bleeding. I was checking for my teeth. I was waking up in strangers' beds. It was a real nightmare. But I came up, I had this, this cool. flash of lightning. I just decided like maybe stand up was something I wanted to do. And and something I could do and something I would align with. And I just really started thinking about it. And um, and I, I was thinking of moving either to LA or, or to New York. And I decided not to go to LA because I was afraid I would drink and drive because I was known for drinking and driving and crashing and hurting myself. So I knew I couldn't be in Los Angeles. So I moved to New York so I could still drink and do comedy. And then on my first open mic, um, I went to Cake Shop Open Mic that was run by, I think, Paperland and Danny Solomon at the time. And uh, uh, I went to my first open mic. I got so wasted that I forgot. I dropped my set of jokes that I had written. And um, I dropped it and I just kind of blacked out and screamed or whatever. And I got off stage and... Um, there was a guy that kept buying me drinks and I felt like such a failure and such a loser because I knew that that was what I wanted to do for my job, which is delusional and crazy. But I just I just knew I wanted to do it as my profession. I wanted to be a professional comedian. It was the only thing I could ever imagine really doing. And so I felt like such a loser and I was sitting at the bar and this incredibly unfunny. And this was coming from a person who just like screamed and bombed and couldn't remember any of her jokes she'd written. Um, an incredibly unfunny guy came and sat next to me and was buying me drinks. And I kept telling him, I don't want drinks. I don't want to talk. And he said, don't be hard on yourself. But I was being hard on myself because that's how much I wanted to do this. And um, I found the guy very annoying. Now cut to the morning. I woke up on that guy's air mattress in Bushwick, um, fully clothed, but, you know, completely hungover. It was snowing out. And, um, you know, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know how to get out. Like, I didn't know. I just didn't know where I was in New York. And I felt like such a loser because I was like, I knew I wanted to do this as my profession. And here I was like going home with some guy. I didn't think I was, that was funny. I didn't want to be hanging out with. I knew like when I was leaving his apartment, when I sat up, I knew I was going to quit drinking. I said that I was like, I'm never drinking again because I already knew it was going to get in the way of this like dream that was like, so real for me. Oh, it's not saying okay. It's not saying the thing. Um, I don't know why it's not saying the tt tts. Maybe you said a, a naughty word, but I'm really out. I appreciate you, my dear. Last year, Annie got mad at Esther because she didn't include her in a movie, even though Bobby and Kalila were cast. And now she felt trash. Two days a week, the movie came out. The story is a major cope. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Esther, because she didn't include her in the movie. So, is everybody in the movie? So, Kalala's in the movie. Obviously, Esther's in it. But Annie isn't in it. That's a bit odd, isn't it? It is a bit strange. Especially that. Especially the movie, looks. it looks like, one. you know, this is the type of movie that they could have easily cast their friends in it. Um, yeah, interesting, isn't it? Um, I do understand somewhat, or, or kind of can sympathise, with her plight in terms of she was go getting herself blackout drunk to kind of avoid doing the thing that she should be doing, which is stand up. She probably always had a dream to be a stand up comedian, like most creatives, um, was probably too afraid to admit it 
This story really sucks. Man, Annie is bad at this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she is. Because I think what Uche is saying is true. <clears throat> I think it's a cope. I think some of you guys are getting bored or getting annoyed by her story because at the core of it, you can sense that she's lying. You can sense that she's coping. for. She's basically making excuses for why she's leaving, but not telling you the truth of what she's leaving, why she's leaving. You know, we can all sense it. Even if you haven't watched the show, you don't know much about her at all. You don't know about her dynamic with, with fucking Kalila. You have no, you didn't know about what the Uche just mentioned here before she mentioned it. I think we can all sense that she's kind of full of shit here. And I think that's the really disappointing thing. Like, clearly, she went through a hard time getting into stand-up. I Again, I can sympathize with, you know, not really trying to face up to your dream because it would require you to kind of step up and to kind of be present and to sort of take responsibility of it. And a lot of people would want to kind of put that off. But I think at the core of it, <coughs> it does kind of speak to her in general, just never really fulfilling her potential. That story is really a good example of it. She probably knew from a while back that she always wanted to be a stand-up comedian and she's never really kind of actualized her potential because she is quite... I think she's funny on pods. Um, she probably is a decent enough stand-up. Um, she seems to be friends of all the right people. So clearly she's got something about her, but she's never really fulfilled her potential, you know? I think... Is this is this fair to say? I think even someone like a Nikki Glazer probably sells more tickets than her. And I'd get I, I would assume Annie Liederman is probably way funnier than Nikki Glazer. So I think she's making excuses. I don't think Trash Tuesday was holding her back at all. I think she's the one been holding herself back. The little quip that she I get I get the feeling she's a little bit is this a thing to say that okay, maybe I'm picking what I'm I'm picking apart everything that she's saying here. But I get the feeling she's a bit of a hater he, he hear me out here she's mentioned a few times i think she even mentioned the brendan thing oh i'd never suck his dick he's not funny this guy I went back home with at that time he kept buying me drinks and he wasn't funny like i get the feeling she's a bit of a hater so that might be the reason also that she's not really actualized her potential um you know she kind of it maybe sits there and thinks, oh, I'm way more talented. I've got way more of a funnier bone in my left toe than these guys have in their whole fucking body. That might kind of speak of what is going on there. Sitting on the pod with those two women, especially Kalila, not being a professional stand-up, and maybe Kalila getting more laughs than you're getting. A lot of that thing might kind of play a part in it. Because I do get, I don't know if, it, again, if I'm reading too much into it, I get a lot of hater vibes about her, you know? Um, that might be part of the reason why it's kind of holding her back. But she's definitely lying about Trash Tuesday definitely fucking lying the pod wasn't holding her back um most likely the thing holding her back was obviously exposing brendan to some extent um maybe her personality and obviously a bit of her attitude as well but i could be wrong trying to black out because i didn't want to be with myself so it was so exciting to like have quit drinking and have this thing that i love that was giving me like fulfilling me so much and i was so proud of myself for doing and i really busted my ass i worked so hard and i got um you know, I started getting booked at shows. I started running a show at the comedy at the restaurant I was working at. And I start Big up Keith T. Just sending some positivity your way. I do think she received the at kind of attention because that's how she presents herself. Exactly. Exactly. Like I've said it before, and I think people have called me a simp and a fucking cuck on here sometimes. I do think it is entirely different and probably a far more difficult journey for a stand-up comedian to make it especially in LA there's a lot of creeps especially if you're like mildly attractive there's a lot of creeps around um there's a lot of exploitation a lot of backstabbing a lot of you know um you know hating whatever it may be called but I do think if that's the case you have to move a little bit you know differently you have to move with a level of intention you have to move with a little bit of like now, so a little bit of awareness. So you can't really sit here and complain when you built when you've kind of perpetuated this reputation or this image of yourself. People have responded to that image of yourself or treated you because of the way you carry yourself, and then this negatively impacted your career. And then you try to blame it on the podcast you was on. You know, a lot of this is kind of on you. A lot of it, I'd imagine, um, because again, as as much as it was great for us. Um, the community of people who don't like Brendan Schaub for her to say what she said. Did she really need to say it? Yada, yada, yada. Save, Save it for the <laughs> yeah, autobiography. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, big up Crash. Do you, do you guys do, do, do you guys get what I mean? Like, as great as it was for us to hear her talk about the drug walk, did she really need to say what she said about Brendan? And where did that come from, really? Did it come from her feeling this? Because I, I know there are some women out there, I remember speaking to somebody, I forgot who said it to me, where they get offended at certain guys approaching them. Like, if a guy is really ugly or just isn't their type, they, it almost offends them when they try to, like, hit on them. So maybe there's a part of that about her. But I've got the feeling a lot of it was kind of rooted in some level of hate and jealousy. The fact that Brendan was pulling up to the comedy store in this massive Ford F-150 truck. Um, he was parking in the, comedy, in the comedy spaces. He was doing the same shitty comedy he does now on, at the comedy store. And he was really kind of letting his nuts hang and walking around like he's fucking Conor McGregor. He's prime. I'd imagine a lot of that kind of went into her like not liking him. And then when he comes up to her and says, hey, walk me to my truck. She's like, what the fuck, my nigga? Like, you're not even funny. You know what I mean? So maybe the reason why she exposed Brendan was less to do with her feeling violated and with her feeling like she got disrespected and more so with her just being disgusted that this unfunny cunt is making way more money than she has or that she's doing at the time and is way more quote-unquote famous. That might be the reason why. So the intentions weren't the greatest and now she's put herself in a pickle, unfortunately, because comedy stand-up comedy is very i feel like a misogynistic kind of you know scene they seem to treat women a lot different um maybe it's harder for them to come up but she kind of put herself in a corner because she's you know said that story for the shits and giggles and to kind of get on the algorithm but then you end up buying her in the ass Good, um booking all of the good shows like all these like really cool shows with these like bigger comics and it was just like starting to work and i was just starting to figure out like really how to have my presence on stage. I was really learning how to write jokes, really how to put a set together. I got the Montreal Comedy, the New Faces Montreal Comedy Festival, like two years in. Um, the yeah, yeah. I think what, Crash, yeah, you're right. I think we're basically saying the same things. I'm just using different words. What you said there is definitely true, yeah? She felt more like it was an unfunny comic trying to reduce her to being a comedy blowjob. True. And I also think there might have been an ink a bit about her that already didn't like him because he was successful and he's unfunny. So you add those two things together, it's like, you know, and obviously Brendan's not the best guy to read signs. He's not the most socially aware person. So he probably had no idea deep down and he didn't like him. He went up to her like all confident, like all me to my truck and shit. And she probably looked at him like, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? Like, number one, who the fuck do you think I am? Number two, no. And number three, get fucked. Do you know what I mean? Like that probably was happened. So I think we're both right in a way. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Got the unrepped. And I, and I earned it, you know, like I just worked so hard for it. Um, I then of course had a rumor spread about me that I found years later that the reason I got it was that I slept with the booker, which was so hurtful. That was like such a painful thing to have happen because. I find this bit interesting. She doesn't really outright deny this rumor. So maybe she slept with another booker and not this particular one. That's why she's saying this. But I find it interesting that she says this rumor was really harmful for her career. People thought she slept with this booker, but she doesn't really outright deny it. And again, there's a lot of like, it's a hard thing about being a woman in those type of scenes. There's a lot of shit tied to this that has to do with her fucking randoms. A lot of the shame, a lot of the embarrassment, a lot of the shit, like, I wonder what, 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 what that's about. Does she have like a history of that in her past? Is this something that she was coping with when she came to comedy? Like, because I, d I don't think it's a like a controversial statement, but I don't think it's a bad thing if you're a woman to use your sexuality to kind of get you somewhere. You just got to be mindful of how it can kick you in the ass later down the line. If you're somebody that overly puts yourself out there as a sexual being and people reduce you to your sexual beingness, you kind of have to take responsibility for that, right? It's kind of like um the girl that I like, fucking Kerry Feehan. You can't really complain when people are being a little bit perverted with you when all you're presenting is the fact that you've got a nice house and you're on fucking OnlyFans. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of, you're kind of playing with fire. You get a lot of money from it. You get a lot of eyes from it. But you also put yourself at the mercy of absolute creeps and weirdos. So it's a hard one to kind of juggle. But I get a feeling that there's a lot of like shame around sex and who she fucked in the industry. Um, I had just sacrificed and dedicated my life to this, which sounds crazy because it's whatever, it's just stand up. But I just, 
I don't know. I just, whatever. So that rumor sucks. That still haunts me, by the way. Big up Joel from MMA. Yeah, I'm alive, my friend. Thank you. Or oh, Joel from MIA. I'm alive, my friend. Thank you for joining. I was talking to Joe List um, when he did his episode of Annie Wood, and he told me that an open micer or a newer comic had come up to him and been like, didn't Annie Letterman hook up with the... So, by the way... <laughs> that must feel so terrible, isn't it? To have all these random people in the scene talking about your pussy like that. Honestly, being a woman in the scene is so horrible. These guys just, like, comparing notes. Uh, how long did you last? Was she good? Did she let you doggy? Like... <laughs> Honestly, being a woman in the entertainment industry is horrible, bro. That's why... Don't you guys understand now why... Um, what's her name? Um, what's that woman's name again that went out with fucking um, Joy Coy? I, I, I kind of understand why people like, you know... Uh, what do you call it? Ricky... What's her name? I forgot her fucking name, man, these comedians. But I get why a lot of them are bitches. Because if you try to be a bit funny, you try to be happy-go-lucky, try to be one of the lads... People think you're a whore. So, yeah, Chelsea Handler. That's it, Chelsea Handler. Don't you, not, don't you guys not understand why Chelsea Handler's got that reputation that she has, where she doesn't hang out, she keeps herself to herself. People say that she's a, a, um, a bitch, but I don't think so. I just think she kind of doesn't want these fucking not, not donuts to get the wrong impression. Oh, I love it. And don't ever spread that rumor about people. That is so shitty. I busted my ass. I worked, I was... I had a job where I could get off at a certain time. I you see what I mean? She still didn't admit it. She still didn't. She still didn't deny that she slept with his booker. Bit dicey. It deals with people where they signed me up for mics. I would sign them up for mics. Like I just worked really hard. And it was the only thing in my entire life that I've ever focused my energy on like this. So anyway, got into Montreal Comedy Festival. I got um, a showcase with Fox and I ended up getting a little deal with, with Fox Network. I got on Chelsea lately. I got on Girl Code. I moved to LA. I moved back to New York for a year. I wrote on Sasha Baron Cohen show. I wrote on Borat. I had my own TV show on E. It was only four episodes, but I did have it. I just have worked very hard. I got to be on Grand Theft Auto and stuff. And this is not me. Like, I just want you guys to know, like, I just love what I do and how I have felt in the past this was like a massive cope who said it before was it was it uche or somebody this was like a massive cope segment why is she mentioning all this shit <laughs> here are my credits i'm amazing is she mentioning this because she feels like she should be more famous is she mentioning this to kind of give herself a bit of a motivation a bit of a kick up the ass why is she mentioning all this stuff is that i am not able to focus on that and that is like i it is i know it is insane to say that that to complain at all about this like beautiful job that I absolutely love, that I feel so grateful to do. And I love making people laugh. And I feel like that's like why I'm on earth is to just do this. This is what I love. I've never loved anything else besides Jägermeister, but I like this more. Don't you find it interesting? People who are unable to hold down a regular job, who enjoy drinking and partying, seem to always have a calling to stand up comedy. <laughs> Don't you find that interesting? Why is it the people that live like degenerates, have no ability to be responsible adults, are always drawn to a career that enables their worst behaviours? It's almost as if they're all full of shit. But I just, like, I just, I just want you to know that that is just what I love to do. And it, I'm sure you do. it's what I want to be known for is my stand-up. I don't, I love doing podcasts. I don't need to be a podcaster i'm excited to like evolve this and see what we can do but really what i like to do is be as authentic as i possibly can and as funny as i possibly can so she's basically saying she can't be her authentic self and a really funny self on trash tuesday she's saying a podcast is holding her back from being funny can you imagine that um sometimes the order's a little different <laughs> but um I just don't feel like I've been able to focus on my stand-up. And so I needed... To I'm not going to lie. If I'm Kalila and Esther, I'm going to take offense to this. I'm not going to lie. She should be doing this with them, beside her. But the fact that she's on her own podcast, essentially saying that I'm a true comedian, those two bitches aren't, it's a little bit distasteful. It's a little bit rude. I'm not going to lie. 
a little bit rude. Oh, I can't be my best self around you losers. You guys are like dimming my star. You guys are taking away from my ability to be my best self. You guys are not allowing me to be great. I don't know. It comes across a little bit, you know, comes across a little bit bitchy. You streamline things and figure out what I, what had to go and what was causing me the most, um, was taking the most of my energy. And for me, that was Trash Tuesday. So I, as I, I know that there's so many fans that love the show and I love the show and I'm really proud of everything no, that we've created, but it's just like, you don't love the show. Don't I, <laughs> I want to do my comedy special and I keep pushing it off because I just can't. Come on. You're saying you can't do a comedy special because of a podcast. Isn't that more of a you problem than a podcast problem? If you can't do your comedy special because of your podcast, doesn't that have to do more with you than the podcast itself? Focus. And um, I'm really excited that I now have more time to focus on that and more time to focus on Annie Wood. And that I'm not, even though maybe you guys have, are just fans of me and you've liked everything. Also, Annie Wood, terrible podcast name. Maybe I'm in the minority here, but I feel like Annie Wood is a terrible podcast name. Let me know if I'm if I'm being wrong here, but I feel like calling a podcast Annie Wood is terrible. You're nowhere near Hollywood. You're not Hollywood. You, I don't know. Why is she calling it Annie Wood? What's Annie Wood got to do with it? Are you interviewing Hollywood people? Are you talking about Hollywood stories? Just because you live there. All right. Doing for me, I feel like I've been showing up like half myself everywhere I'm going and I just want to be able to really be present and like focused because... Clayla and Esther are fine to be trash, but Annie seems to be bothered by people thinking she's trash. You could you you said it better than I could ever say it. I use a lot of words, I rambled, I waste a lot of time, but you put it there perfectly, Keith. Kalila and Esther are fine to be trash, but Annie seems to be bothered by people thinking she's trash. Perfect. Perfectly put. That's basically what I'm getting here. Perfectly fucking put. These guys are too trashy for me. These guys are beneath me. These guys are dimming my star. They're not letting me shine. Not letting me be my best self. I have to do it on my own or my pod, Annie would. Come on. Perfectly put, Keith T. Perfectly put. I'm so grateful that I get to make a living doing this. And, um, and leaving Trash Tuesday is like, was a very scary decision to come to because it is a large chunk of my income, but I have to like bet on myself and I have to trust my instincts. And oh, really? Big up Brendan, B Brendan Mulry. Let me say that again, AZ. You cannot find this woman on Netflix or Tubi. So she's the bigger star. Her star is not being able to shine. I ain't doing my own thing, but she's not on Netflix and she's not on Tubi. How much of a star are you then, darling? Listen to my body. Um, you know, I was sick for like, I had a, some would, some would argue listening to your body has been the reasons why you're in the position that you're in now. Giving into your bodily urges hasn't probably led you down the right path. You should probably not listen to your body. I don't know. Again, I don't know the woman, but you should probably not listen to your body. You should probably be a little bit more rational. Maybe be a little bit more critical. Maybe be a little more honest with yourself and actually think with your mind, your brain and not your body. But again, what do I know? Like a crazy cough for five weeks and I'm like coughing on stage. I'm trying to like chug NyQuil and stuff. It's affecting my, you know, so I just realized like I'm burnt out and that's what I need to do. I don't even know if you guys know what I've done. Like, I don't even know if you guys know like my situation. <laughs> oh, my son. <laughs> I want to be a good mother to my son. I haven't been showing it. Randy. But oh. I don't know. I guess I just like, I like, that's just how I feel. And I just, you know, I know that like people love to sort of like, to like read into everything we're all saying on these podcasts. And especially if there's like a podcast shakeup, like what's going on with Trash Tuesday. Uh Why wouldn't we read something into this? You were doing this pod with your two close friends at the time, two people that you were, friendly to friendly with to the point where you were comfortable enough to do a podcast with two people who you are friendly enough to do a podcast with 
despite having to travel crazy amounts, because I think she says in, in this clip that she had to commute like three hours every day or every time she recorded to go and meet those girls. So you were good enough or the relationship was okay enough for you to be okay with putting yourself through that. Then you suddenly leave. You don't announce it on the pod you all share together. You leave and announce it on your own pod. You then start it off by making it sound like the other two girls were holding you back. Of course, people are going to read into it a little bit. Like, why wouldn't they? You didn't even do it the right way. You didn't even give them the respect or the decency to do it with them side by side, holding hands and be like, hey, man, this didn't work out. I'm going to go do my own thing. But I still love you guys to kind of kill the story. You actually perpetuated it. You actually poured gasoline on the story by leaving in the, you know, in the dead of the night and then recording your own response on your own pod probably without even consoling the other two girls of course they're going to read into it like this woman's being facetious on pur on purpose it feels like um people want to find like the gossip or what's going on and i just want to, you to know for me i just really need to focus my energy and i i i know that being a roofer is a harder job than podcasting i <laughs> fucking know it but what? um i but what? absolutely agree with you but and what? i'm not saying that and i'm not like i don't want to sound like a victim at all it's just you, i like just have like a vision of the work i want to create and it's been so frustrating to not be able to like i can't wait until again i'm not I'm, I, I don't want to put out bad things for her but i got the feeling she's kind of full of shit so it's going to be interesting to see now you've got all the time in the world trash user isn't holding you back anymore let's see what you create now allegedly that was holding you back you couldn't be your best self okay now you've got the time to do what you want let's see what you do now i don't know i'm just very passionate about what i do and it's it it feels really like it's just really hard to not be able to to do my to be my best and do my best oh well i'm so proud of my big girl it was scary but i like conquering my fear guy that would be a fan of brendan Schaub, unironically doesn't he look like the kind of guy that would and from what i could gather here they've been together for a while so imagine him being okay with dapping up brendan after he allegedly asked his fiance for a drug walk it's scary to her it's scary guys to leave an old thing with so many people are used to it's a scary thing to do i know and, and i'm is... used to it and i'm like and i wish the girls the best and you know i am a people pleaser so it does suck to like let people down i mean every every show i do it's like people coming up being like oh my god i love this you know and it's like that is like heartbreaking for me but i do feel kind of like a g to be like standing up for myself and what i need and like i can't just like be doing things for the fans or for a g isn't running away in the dead of night to record your own podcast to get in front of the story and explain why you left another one a g is actually being able to make it work while you've got little time while you're burning a candle at both ends that's what g's actually do they create, they put out amazing things despite all the turmoil going on in their life. If anything, the turmoil in their life contributes to the amazing shit that they put on. She wants to have this perfect scenario where everything is aligned, where everything is set up in the right way so that then she can finally record or finally produce. It kind of reminds her of people who are like, oh, you know, creatives who are like, oh, I've got to get the perfect camera. I have to get the perfect mic. I have to get the perfect studio. No, if you can't do it now with an iPhone, you're not going to do it ever. If you can't do it now with a fucking notepad, you're not going to do it with a fucking computer or a laptop. It's a nonsense. She's obviously trying to convince herself, but the reason why she isn't where she wants to be isn't because of Esther or Kalila. It's because of Annie. Anyone else? Well, you did it for the fans for a long time. That was, yeah. you know? I don't know. Guys who wear beanies like that over their ears and guys who have those type of tattoos... There's just something about it that just grinds my gears. You, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know it's because I'm just not that type of dude. But maybe just shut the fuck up. Why? Why is he even on this show anyway? Why is he on this? Why is he on this fucking show? And this is scary because I do not know what's next. I know special. I know stand up. I know that, and I know Annie Wood, but I do not know. But it felt like it was very exciting. It was scary, but also very exciting to like to step into the unknown. And I'm really proud of myself. And I hope you guys are proud of me and I hope people understand. She's going, she's going over to the other side of the mountain, guys. 
Also, calling your pod any wood, but then having regular LED lights that spill out any wood and not the actual Hollywood sign in the style or not any wood in the style of the Hollywood sign is a big misstep and oversight, really. You know, like, well, that's an easy win. Just have any wood written in like, the fucking Hollywood sign font. Why would you have it as an LED and the LED isn't even turned on? The side that you can't see, the side that the sun doesn't touch. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. No. No, you can't say anything. You don't pay the bills. You don't pay the rent. You don't contribute to the car note. You don't buy the fucking dog, dog food. You can't say shit. That's what happens when you're a man and you don't contribute anything. You can only talk when you contribute money. If you pay her bills, if you pay the rent, if you dick her down good, then you can talk. But if you don't do any of those things, you can't say anything. You honestly can't. No man should be happy to just talk. You shouldn't be able to talk and have an opinion if you've got a fucking overdraft. You should be able to talk and have an opinion if your fucking phone bill keeps getting cut off every month. No, you don't talk. Maybe you've got some other things to worry about. Focus on those things. You can't talk if you're fucking playing hacky sack in a park at 2 p.m. in the afternoon with your fucking dog while everyone's working. You can't talk. I'm sorry. Can I tell people the truth of what really happened? Yeah. So, guys, we were um, trying to watch TV the other day, and um, I, I, maybe it's just me, but this th this thing that he has, where he kind of has a little smirk, where he thinks like he's saying something really funny, is doing my fucking nothing. I swear to God, it's doing my nothing. That person is something that's like he's always like, <laughs> wait till they get a load of this. <laughs> Like, just say your fucking shit and keep it moving, bro. We couldn't find the remote control. I said, where the hell's the remote? Where's the remote? Where's the remote? Then we like, you know, stuck our hand down the couch and we pulled out a remote, but it wasn't the remote that we were... Uh, we were fucking bored already, you cunt. I'm fucking bored. NJ Ranger, big up. Thank you for pointing that out about the sign, as... It's like nails on a chalkboard for anyone who cares about thematics. Why call your pod Annie Wood and then interview your fucking boring fiancé? Why? Why? There's nothing Hollywood about having a fucking fiancé. You know what's Hollywood? Fucking everyone around town. Fucking your way to the top. Backstabbing people. Talking shit about people. That's fucking Hollywood. Not sitting in front of this fucking dork with his beanie over his ears. TV was just another random remote. The and fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is nonsense. Whatever he's doing, guys. Get ready. And then so we're watching TV and we try to like click the fast forward. But when Annie clicked the fast forward, it fast forwarded her life. Uh. King Bayou. King Bayou. You couldn't be more wrong. You couldn't be more wrong. There's no part of me that ever wants to get looked after by anybody. Legit. I would rather die. I would rather go hungry than ask anyone for any amount of help. I swear to God. If you guys knew me outside of this, I swear to God you would know this to be true. I would rather fucking die in my bed of starvation like those kids in fucking Gaza than ask anybody for fucking help for a fucking piece of bread for some baked beans, for a coffee, fuck off. Especially a woman that I'm living with. Ask her to what, pay my bills? To lend me money to go out, to buy, like, are you insane? As a man doing that, as a man, you could be proud to actually have your wife fucking hold you down and support you in that way. Shameful, absolutely shameful. That's the only thing you're good for as a dude, re reproducing and looking after people. If you can't even look after yourself, what use are you to the world, bruh? I'm sorry. What use are you to the world? You're put on this planet to reproduce and to take care of people, whether it's your family, whether it's your partner, whoever. If you can't even take care of your fucking self, you can't buy yourself a fucking Kit Kat. You can't buy yourself a Kit Kat and you got fucking opinions. Come on, man. Never in a million years. I would rather die. Die. D I E. Then ask anyone for fucking help, especially my partner. Fuck that shit. Honestly, I fucking hate it. And at first she was like, oh, this is, this is good. I could just fast forward through 
through the parts that, you know, had been taking a lot of time and a lot of energy. And she was fast forwarding through all these parts. But what she didn't know was that when she was fast forwarding, she was on autopilot. And when you're on autopilot, you miss out, you on, miss out on all the good things and you, you're not learning the lessons that you need to learn. So she fast forward actually all the way to the end of her life. And I died. Remember that? Who the f man, who the fuck is this? <laughs> here's where this is not believable, okay? It's not that. Like this guy must have an, um, this guy must be dicking her down differently because there's hardly anything going on in that brain of his. Hardly anything. What the fuck was that story? Huh? Is he high? We can we can deal with the verisimilitude of the idea of it like, okay, in this world there's a you know there's a TV, there's a show that's a movie that's my life. But the where it gets actually unbelievable, where it gets unbelievable is that you think if I saw the story of my You know what? Can I say this and not be mean? Or can I say this and be mean? Is there any correlation between the personality of her boyfriend and the personality of her dog? Do women like Annie, who maybe have fucked too much and maybe think it's kind of put them in trouble, do they sometimes get to a point where they just want to have a docile guy like this because it's easier to kind of like handle and to keep a lid on? Is there something to be said for that? Because he kind of reminds, he kind of looks like her dog. He kind of has a similar type of vibe. Yeah, exactly. Golden Retriever boy. Like, is there something, again, maybe I'm, I'm being a fucking idiot here, but I'm not a sociologist. But is there something to be said for women who were highly promiscuous in their youth, tending to go for a Golden Retriever boyfriend when they start to advance in age and they realize that that whole life probably wasn't beneficial for their life and their career? Is there something to be said for that? If I wouldn't be like slow mo checking myself out. I wouldn't be fast forwarding. Oh no no no! I was thinking of the movie Click <laughs> with Adam Sandler and I know I'm, I'm Henry yeah. Winkler. Didn't he work at like Best? No, Bed, he Bath went to Beyond? Best Bed Bath and Beyond and like Christopher Walken. Of course, he knows all these movies. He doesn't fucking work. Man watches movies every day. Of course, he knows all the details of all the plot lines of these fucking movies because he's he's at home every day watching shit on his laptop, not doing jack shit. No wonder he knows everything. He just probably he probably watched that movie yesterday. Zanny was like, "Oh, I got a remote." This. Yeah, I do. Just feel like you know, I'm 40 years old. Wow, she's 40. To be fair, for a white lady, she looks pretty good for 40. For a white lady, she looks pretty good for 40. Maybe it's because she stopped drinking early on, but she doesn't look too bad for 40 years old. How does the guy, do you reckon? Is the guy, what are we going to say? Is the guy early 30s or you say he's mid 20s? He kind of looks old, but I think he kind of might be young. He might have one of those, he might be one of those like developmentally slow type of dudes, you know? He looks older, but he acts like a teenager type of thing. Yeah, people, okay, if you're saying he's late 20s, okay, cool. So he might be, shit, she's got a literal fucking, you know, boy toy on her hands. 20 years older than him so maybe this is a beneficial relationship for both maybe she enjoys looking after him he's like her human dog she's like his stepmom you know guys love stepmom porn and shit maybe he kind of sees her as like a stepmom porn thing maybe it's beneficial they both kind of get a lot out of it she gets a young guy to dick her down he gets a sugar mama to pay his bills Win-win. I'm very excited to be entering my 40s. I'm very excited about this time of my life. But it's like, there's no more like doing things for anyone but myself. What? Have you, ha, isn't that been your whole entire life? Now suddenly you're, 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 cho you're choosing you. you oh, anyway, let's just continue. And I mean that in a way that's like, that's like empowering and not, greedy or selfish you know it's like you just have to take care of yourself and it's like i'm really excited for what's gonna, gonna come and um there's a lot of projects in the work i do i mean there's projects that are like so big and so cool that 
big people have been hitting me up about and being like, when are we going to get back to this? And I'm like, I literally like can't even imagine focusing on this right now. And there's really cool things coming. Press X about. Really cool. There's really cool things coming and I'm really excited. And I'm also excited about the fact that I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I'm excited for like all of the things that I can't even imagine. Cause you know, when you make a big change, how you, you look back and you go, oh my God, I can't oh. even like, I didn't even, I couldn't, I never would have gotten this thing if I hadn't done this thing. And I can't believe it. That's a bit of a dumb mindset to have personally. Sometimes shit doesn't work out. Sometimes you make the right decision at the time and it ends up being the wrong decision later on down the line. This idea that, oh, because that's a very LA sort of like, you know, optimistic mindset to have, but there's no guarantees that she's going to be, she's going to actualize her potential now that she's left Trash Tuesday and she's doing it on her own. There's none whatsoever. If anything, there's probably more risk involved now. So the fact that she's so certain that she's going to blossom and become the next fucking... I don't know, um, what's her name? Chelsea Handler is quite insane, but you know, maybe she knows something that we don't. Oh Randy, my God. I can't what believe in the this hell dog. is wrong with you? He's just wrestling a plastic bag. Oh, well, I'm so proud of my girl. Guys, write in the comments if you're so proud of uh, the comedy your girl. store documentary. <laughs> yeah, no wonder you're laughing. Look at how look at this is pure joy. Bills paid, belly full, clothes washed. She probably even ironed his fucking socks. Of course he's laughing the way he is. Of course. Life couldn't be sweeter. LA rent is fucking expensive. She covers most of it. Life is good. <laughs> Don't forget about that. Oh. How about right before the, um, right before I started that pocket, Randy, right before I started Trash Tuesday, fine. Um, I was in that comedy store documentary, okay? I was sitting, This we did it during the pandemic. This is why, how I know it was right before we started. I was sitting, they, they called me and they had me on the fifth, I was on the fourth episode, featured in the fourth episode, and then I was in the fifth episode. Where they had- um, Oh, a little skip there, a little cut there. A, little a panel cut there. of Cheeky cut. comics talking about comedy. And this was the panel. Joe Rogan, Bill Burr, um, Jay Leno, Whitney Cummings, Paul Rodriguez, Mike Binder, the director, Mike Binder. <laughs> and me. That felt great. That felt amazing to be in that company. When I went in, I still had my mask on and Jay Leno came up and was like excited to meet me. He loves my stuff. Like, I just was like, oh my. With that chin, could some argue that Jay Leno might be her dad? Is that possible? Given the chin, is there a possibility that Annie Liederman might be the long lost child of Jay Leno? God. Did it feel great because of that or because you were smoking a cigar? Anyway, I'm done with this. Last point to be made here. You see how she mentioned the stuff about being in a comedy store documentary? This is my final point. Say what you want to say about Joey Diaz. I feel like he's incredibly on the money when he's talking about stand-up and the business of stand-up, especially when he's talking to Lee Sayat, because Lee Sayat is fucking young, he's coming up in the scene, he's a bit green, and he kind of imparts all his wisdom into Lee Sayat, sees him as a fucking, you know, as his um, adopted son and shit, and it's really a good sort of like, you know, insight into the stand-up and entertainment industry and how to navigate. One particular moment when I was listening to the church of what's happening what's right now back in the day, I remember Lee Sayat kind of being annoyed that Joey Diaz wasn't taking him on the road, wasn't having him as an opener and shit, and kind of like, hey, why don't you take me? Why don't, you know what I mean, kind of thing. And Joey said something really, really, really interesting. He was like, as a stand-up, you should never hang out with other stand-up who are way more successful than you because it can sometimes warp your perception of where you are in your career. If you keep hanging around with the Bill Burrs, the Joe Rogans, the Tom Pappers, the Burt Kreischers, the Tim, Tom, Tom Segura, Tim Segura, you could almost feel as if like you're on their level just because you're hanging out with them, despite your comedy not being on their level, despite obviously you're not being as famous in them, blah, 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 blah. So I feel like when it comes to any creative field, sometimes comparison is the real enemy of progress. And sometimes surrounding yourself with quote-unquote murderers and killers 
can actually make you a little bit impatient, can make you develop this weird ego, this weird sense of entitlement that can come across really bad in the way that it does with Annie. Because I feel like Annie's always been popular. Again, she strikes me as the type of girl that would be popular around a lot of dudes. Guys would kind of enjoy her company. She's got great banter. She's easy to look at. All these type of things guys would enjoy. And it happens to be that all the guys that she hangs around with that like her company are also some of the biggest comics in the industry. So it kind of warped her perception of where she's always been. She makes them laugh. They're always crying, laughing when they're together. She's she experienced this kind of back and forth. Of, okay, I'm making these great comedians laugh. We're in the same social circles. I perform on the same stage as them. So it makes her feel like she's a bigger star than what she is, but she isn't really. So I feel like this decision of hers to live Trash Tuesdays is a little bit preemptive, a little bit of a knee-jerk thing to do because I feel like she still has a lot of work to kind of get her name out there that she could have done being attached to an already successful podcast as opposed to doing it on her own. She could have done both things at the same time, worked on Trash Tuesday and also worked on her own quote unquote personal brand, her own projects, her own journey. You, you don't need to quit one thing to focus on the other thing. If anything, it puts more pressure on the other thing. You know, now you quit the other thing, especially with the income, especially with the exposure, blah, 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 blah. And obviously at the heart of it too, I feel like her and Esther and Kalila weren't as good friends as they purported to be it. The fact that she's talking about leaving the show and not sitting beside her sisters is a great example that they probably were never that close friends anyway. There probably was a bit of jealousy involved there, most likely, especially with Kalila not being a comedian at all and maybe feeling as if like, oh, Kalila is a bit more famous than me. Maybe Esther's more famous than me and you think you're more funnier. All that probably things probably worked into it. Um and maybe again what she said honestly about the commute that might also have worked into it right because she said oh three hours commuting was killing her which would kill most people i think it doesn't matter if you're doing a podcast um the fact that you have to commute three hours to go to work even if it's three days a week even if it's two days a week it's in three hours too much to be honest you're wasting what 12 hours a fucking week on travel alone that's crazy but i have a feeling that unless she's honest with herself that the reason why she hasn't fulfilled her potential is her. She's going to repeat the same mistakes and she's not going to get anywhere. Because I feel like she has this op opinion, which a lot of creatives sometimes do. I sometimes can have that opinion where you feel like the outside forces are the reason why you aren't where you're at. Where really and truly, to lend a term from Joko Wilnick's amazing book, Extreme Ownership, it's usually always you. 99% of the time, if you're not where you think you should be, it's mostly down to you and not to other extenuating circumstances or forces. Unless you recognize that and own up to it and then kind of put it right, it's not going to go anywhere. And more so, that fucking donut um, airhead of a boyfriend isn't going to help things either. You know, like having to keep, 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 keep a fucking grown adult fed and clothed and bathed is probably going to put a lot of pressure on her also, being the main breadwinner of the home. Um, I don't know, man. I think the circumstances around her aren't really the greatest. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, you kind of need someone to push you. And this guy's just, what, sitting at home playing fucking Fortnite every day. <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, wish her, wish her the best. Godspeed to Annie Liederman. Hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fucking fuck?